Hey, this is Matt once again with the back to the videos of the paid request this time for my friend Mike, OCP Communications. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, PayPal is usually the best bet or join my Patreon. Links are in the info box, uh, wherever it's at nowadays on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, Mike wanted me to look into this documentary that he saw way back in the day. It was only on VHS from 1995. It is on YouTube. It's called The Art of Illusion, 100 Years of Hollywood Special Effects. It's 51 minutes long. I say it was on VHS in 1995, but it is on YouTube. And this was cool. I liked it. This was very interesting to see because, as the title suggests, it's talking about the decades of special effects. But it also shows some nice behind-the-scenes footage of movies. And because of 1995, it was a good time period, so you see some behind-the-scenes stuff of Die Hard, Demolition Man, The Abyss, the stop motion of the Terror Dogs and Ghostbusters 2, a bit of Gremlins 2, when they're shooting this commercial where the gremlin uh, is, was it Tony Rand? I forget the, the actor who voiced him, but the head gremlin in Gremlins 2, the head bad guy, he's doing a promotion and pretend to have a gizmo puppet. Come see the movie, it's good. And how they puppet it. Uh, they talk a bit about T2. The one film that, I mean, they talk about because it's special effects related, but what one film doesn't fit in this? The Abyss, Die Hard, Demolition Man, Terminator 2, Ghostbusters, Total Recall, and Lawnmower Man 2. Gee, which one of these films are not like the other? Now, granted, they, they talk about Lawnmower Man 2 because... I, when did that come out? Was that 96? I don't remember. That film is awful. I like the first film for what it is. Yeah, 96 it came out. So, since they came out in 95, they're in the middle of making it. Okay, yeah. I might... You know what else came out in 96? Independence Day. and They weren't in the middle of making that movie, I guess? <laughs> I guess not. But Lawnmower Man 2 was... But it was also cool that Adrian Barbeau narrates it, who's in John Carpenter's The Fog, Escape from New York, Wes Craven's film Swamp Thing. I liked Adrian Barbeau, so that was a cool additional uh, little surprise that, oh, she just a narrator, cool. So it does start out with them looking at behind the scenes of Lawnmower Man 2. I mean, even though it's a bad film, I am interested in behind-the-scenes stuff, even in films like that. So, like, how they're shooting with the green screen and how little the actors had on set to react to compared to then the effects that are put in. So, it was nice to see some fly-on-the-wall stuff of that. Because I am fascinated. I've always said I am fascinated on the making of films, even for films I'm not entirely beat on. Especially, you know, step with the special effects, because I, I do find the process fascinating. And since it says 100 years, it does go back in the day of, you know, the early bits of film itself. How, you know, just the arrival of the train, we, we film it, and then people were so shocked, and they ran out of the theater because they thought a train was actually coming towards them. And I hadn't heard of this one before. The Execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. Which, this was made in 1895. Which, I don't know, might have been the first beheading shown on a film. Where, obviously, it's cut. There's a dummy. But you see someone getting their head cut off. I'm like, is this the first gore moment in film? Maybe. If so, that's pretty cool. 
that that be the first the first door moment in film institution of mary queen of scots a beheading yeah i don't know if that was the first but they make it seem like it was but they go into uh, the trip to the moon you kind of say perhaps the first sci-fi film the great train robbery which how about we have a film with a actually a narrative and we have this bit we're going to have a map painting kind of move behind it ben-hur painting miniatures metropolis granted because it's 51 minutes we can't spend a whole lot of time with these movies but it's nice to see them referenced and they do talk with some people uh sid mead richard Edland, who worked on films like 2010 the you made contact uh, they do talk with rob routine who tells a little bit of because he had won the oscar for total recall so he tells a little bit about that and working with paul verhoeven it was cool to see like the early early stuff they they mentioned team con and stop motion which i love the 30s team con film Probably the most fascinating stuff, because I'm a big action fan, is when they go into, they go a little bit into Die Hard and the miniatures at the Fox Plaza, so they have like the miniature helicopter. You know that great shot when, when Bruce Willis jumps off the plane, off the, off the plane, off the roof, the explosion, and then you have that shot of the helicopter slowly, going off the side of the building, exploding. It was kind of cool to see. In real time, where it's very quick, and like you can tell it's a miniature, but if you do it in slow mo with the right lighting and the right sound effects, it could make it seem like it's a helicopter blown up beside a building. They spent a decent amount of time on Demolition Man, which was cool, and the 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 guy who worked on the explosives. So he, the guy for Demolition Man, he's talking about the flame bars. So you put this flame bar, then make it seem like there's flames all abound. And the building, the, the great explosion at the beginning, they talk about how that was done. And how like each window, this certain explosive thing was put on there. And how we had to do all these tests with mortars and stuff. Because we had to create this big fireball, but then make sure it clears out so that the building will then drop so it's like okay which actually is something you never think of but yeah because if the flame keeps going and the building drops and they can't see it then the, the building collapses for nothing so there's a bit of timing on there but uh, they talk about how they create that how they create fireballs and using mortars there's also toss of squibs I miss the days of people using squibs was a typical thing. Nowadays, I have, not recently, but I've had people tell me, or ask, what's a squib? And I'm like, oh, man. But at the same time, if they're a younger person, and it's something that's rarely used nowadays, why would they know if you think about it? If it's something that's rarely used... How would they know? How would they know? No. That's how it is. But it's nice to see a little bit of how that's done. And I guess it made sense, but I didn't even really think about this. Using air guns. So let's say someone's getting shot at, but you need stuff on the wall. To do, 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 do. The guy's just shooting. <laughs> Hopefully not to hit the guy, but it's like, okay, shoot, do, 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 So all these sparks would come. I'm like, wow, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that, but oh, that's actually kind of an interesting way. I just, and you see a guy on set doing it. So I, I guess they don't even do that nowadays. Maybe it's like, they're afraid of the guy who's got the guns, like, don't know what he's doing. He's not Alan Baldwin, so... He also won't shoot you. <clears throat> now they do talk about the old days of makeup effects. Like Lon Chaney. Jack Pierce. But then like. 
they skip a lot of stuff. Like, if you don't bring up makeup effects, like Lon Chaney and the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Notre Dame and the Phantom, of, Phantom of the Opera, <clears throat> Jack Pierce, Frankenstein Monster. <clears throat> Sorry. It's like, come on, this is 1995. How are you not going to bring up Rick Baker, American Werewolf in London? Okay, Rob Bottin, they show, like, there's a prop, like a miniature. Like, they show something from the thing. Some, I don't know, it's like a model. They, they show something from it. But they don't really ask Rob Bottin about the thing. They asked him about Total Recall. Which, I mean, that just made sense. It had only come out a few years before. <clears throat> but yeah, they go to stop motion and the terror dolls and Ghostbusters 2. They talked a bit about the Abyss. Uh, this was kind of interesting because i never seen this commercial before. It was a Paula Abdul Diet Coke commercial. Where Paula Abdul's dancing, and then she's dancing with Gene Kelly. As the two of them dancing together. So they got Gene Kelly from a film, cut him out, and put him right next to Paula Abdul. And how they do that, and like they had another person there to get the shadows, and where the shadows would be. I thought that was kind of fascinating. Plus the fact that I had never seen that commercial before. So I'm like, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty neat. That's pretty fascinating. Of course, they do talk about Terminator 2. Like I said, they do talk a bit about Gremlins 2. Uh, Joe Dante's there. He talks a little bit, which was nice to, to see. He makes a good point that you do have a good effect, but if the actor isn't reacting to it like he should, then the effect is bogus. He's got a good point. Joe Dante does have a good point on that. That's absolutely true. You have a magnificent effect, but if the guy's like, mm -hmm, it, who gives a shit? <laughs> but yeah, this was cool to see. Like, this was nice to see. Will you get any new information you haven't gotten before? Probably not if you're someone that knows a bit about movies. But... To have something come back to, into 51 minutes, uh, to be a nice introduction to people who don't know about special effects, it's actually pretty cool. And it's definitely a good nostalgic trip down memory lane. Just again, the sea bits. Like again, it was cool to see the Demolition Man stuff behind the scenes. And then working on how they did the explosion, which is a, again, such a cool explosion at the beginning of Demolition Man. That was cool to see. That's worth a look. And people knew what they were doing, unlike that stupid Al Baldwin movie. Maybe they should watch this and watch that part and see people who know what the hell they were doing. You know, just saying. I mean, I could do with a lot less of Lawmore Man too. Like, talk about the first one at least. But I did, it's a new film coming out, so... It's a sequel to the hit film, so... They probably thought it'd be a lot bigger than it was. So, yeah, I, yeah, I get it. I don't want to get it, but I get it. But yeah, this was uh, this was interesting. This was really, really, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that because of the short running time, just passed over. Uh, Tron, for example. Like how do you do something about the hundred years of Hollywood special effects that you don't mention Tron? And this other, you know, affects milestones. They, I think they briefly show young Sherlock Holmes. Uh, a little bit of Jurassic Park. I'm actually surprised Jurassic Park was not in this bore. Because this is 95 and Jurassic Park was 93. So I am sh in shock. They did not hamper a lot more in Jurassic Park. It's fine because it makes it so that other films like Demolition Man had time to shine. That was very cool. And then a bit of Die Hard. So, but I mean, I'm just, I would have assumed that would have been a big part of this. But it's nice to have other films get their moments to shine. So that was cool. 
I mean, you knew T2 was going to come up. But not as much as I thought. I would say they spend probably a bit more on the Abyss. Which I actually found that kind of refreshing. So. Because uh, I, I like T2. But I do enjoy the Abyss. And at this point. That didn't get as much love as it deserved. In my opinion. And again, it was nice to see stuff like the, the Paul Abdul Coca-Cola commercial. Sorry, Diet Coca-Cola commercial. Um, would have been nice to see a bit more of those weird offshoots commercials or stuff talked about. But, <clears throat> like I said, there's only so much you do with 51 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, this was a, a nice, interesting uh, novelty. And they said you can watch it on YouTube for free. Sure, if effect stuff interests you, definitely give it a look. It's definitely worth a watch. Again, may not get a lot of in-depth information out of it. But yeah, it's a nice like beginner course. You do a lot worse. This I did this was fun. This was fun to watch. So with that said, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.